This free podcast is made possible by the faithful and general support of friends and partners like you. Your support to this ministry is making it possible for millions of people to hear the unique message of faith, hope, healing, unconditional love, and new creation realities found in the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. We hope this daily podcast by Pastor Chris will help you live a life of victory and fulfillment, which God has in store for you. And now, let's join Pastor Chris for a life-changing teaching from God's Word. Coming to you with words and teaching that will change your life forever. All things that you ever need in your life, they're wrapped up in the Word. Go for the Word. You need to understand this thing. And when you get a hold of it, keep saying it. Don't stop talking it. Keep saying it. Keep saying it. The Bible says in the city of Ephesus, so mightily grew the Word of God and prevailed. Can you shout amen? I'm set on the course that I must follow. In the name of Jesus, prosperity is mine. In the name of Jesus, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. Pastor Chris, word hearing. What I want to begin to share with you today is on what I call Christian consecration. I want to know from you, how many of you have found out that you were bought by Jesus? You're bought with a price. You belong to God, not to yourself. Jesus didn't become Lord of my life by um, my just wishing that he would be. I had to confess his lordship over my life. On a certain day, have you ever sat down, taken a pen and a paper for yourself to say, what are those things that God wants me to do? When you grow up, that's what you'll be doing. The Bible says, you are not your own. You are not your own. Have you ever thought about that? What is Christian consecration? What does it mean? What is Christian consecration? In 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 20, the scriptures declare very clearly to us. Read it for me. I want you to see it yourself. Have you found it? What does it say? Again, says that ye are bought with a price. <laughs> come on here. No, come on. I, I was sharing the other evening when we were here, we were having a, 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 a new service here, and I, I was sharing something with you, that God doesn't exist for us. He doesn't live for us. We live for him. We exist for him. He's not out there for us. Now, when the Bible says, if God be for us, you know, because a lot of people don't study, they just, they just read. But the Bible says, if God be for us, that means God, God, God be for us. No, that's not what it's saying. What it says is, God be for us. Who can be against us? It means, if God is back of us. Do you understand? That's what he's saying. Hallelujah. If God is my support, if God is my strength, nobody can be against me successfully. That's what he's saying. But God doesn't live for us. We live for him. 
He doesn't exist for us. So quit, act, quit acting as though God exists for you. You're there? Now, you know, it's very easy for us to write out a list of things we want God to do for us. You know, I got this um, uh, prayer request. We want God to do this and to do that and to do that in the family and in the job and the finances and in this and in that and that and that. We got a long list. Have you ever sat down, taken a pen and a paper for yourself to say, what are those things that God wants me to do? When you grow up, that's what you'll be doing. When you're a baby, you're, I, I, Father, buy me bread. Buy me. <laughs> that's a baby. Daddy's going out, and the little kid comes out. Daddy, buy me football. Buy me shoes. Buy me, buy me, bring me, get me. I need a phone. I want this. I want that. What does daddy say? All right, all right, all right. Get it for you. When he turns 15, he don't tell you, buy me this. You tell him what to do when you're going out. Clean that and clean that and you wash that and you wash that. When I come back, I check it. That's it. Things change as to who gives the instructions. Are you still there? Yes. Now when you've just been born again five years, I asked the Lord to do this for me. I asked the Lord, he asked the Lord. You don't know him yet, the law. When you know him as Lord, you stop calling the law. I told God, I told God, this job belongs to me. You told God. Are you all right? <laughs> Do you know who God is? I told God. So I, said, I told God this job is mine. I, I told God I'm marrying that man. I told God I'm marrying that You told God. You haven't seen anything yet. <laughs> you are not afraid to tell God. Be telling him. No, when you know God, you will stop telling him. You say, oh Lord, you will be humble. <laughs> now I see people praying and telling God, oh, in the name of <laughs> These ones have not seen anything yet. <sighs> Moses said, I exceedingly fear and tremble when he saw the presence of God. No, when you meet him, every strand of hair from your head to your 